Richmond, Virginia is best known as the capital of the old Confederacy during the Civil War. Richmond is filled with historic sites and interestingly acknowledges its Confederate past while also exhibiting progressive ideas throughout the city. So what are the best things to do and see in Richmond today? Hey everyone, so where we are today is the historic Richmond, Virginia. So Richmond is most known as being the capital of the Confederacy during the Civil War. But the city has a rich history. There are tons of neighborhoods, tons of museums to see. Um, we're not gonna go into every neighborhood and every nook and cranny, but we are gonna see a lot of the historic sites and we're gonna kinda show you the top things to see while you're here in Richmond. So. First, the first thing that I think you should see is the historic White House of the Confederacy, which I'm standing right in front of right now. Um, we're gonna head in there and learn a little bit about how this was the focal point and the capital of the Confederacy. So let's head in. Jefferson Davis was the president of the newly formed Confederate States of America in the 1860s, and this is where he, his wife Irina, and their three children lived. The building was constructed in 1818 and maintains an exquisite old world charm. Interestingly, this was not the first White House of the Confederacy that was located further south in Montgomery, Alabama, before the capital of the Confederacy was locked into Richmond, Virginia. Jefferson Davis conducted several official meetings and used the property as both a home and an administrative office. You can see as you wander through the house that there are impressive entertainment areas designed especially to receive company. The house is so interesting because you can feel that it is an administrative political center, yes, but it also feels homey and lived in. The family lived in this home from August 1861 to April 1865. They vacated the home in great haste days after the end of the Civil War when Richmond was recaptured by the Union. As you make your way up to the second floor on the impressive spiral staircase, you will then enter President Davis and his wife's room. She maintained a sewing room off to the side, which opens to the main bedroom. Now we're in the large nursery where the three younger children slept and played with their Irish immigrant nanny. Most of these pieces are the original toys of the Davis children. When you're walking through downtown Richmond, you're going to see a difference in architecture, right? So like many downtown areas, this is the oldest part of Richmond. However, a lot of the buildings were torn down and repurposed for larger, taller buildings, you know, mid-level skyscrapers. That's the kind of things you'll see. However, you will see some very old, 18th and 19th century homes here and they're still here and a lot of them have been um, converted into museums. They're protected as national landmarks. So take a look at some of those here. As you walk in the area, you will notice tons of historic architecture in the area surrounding the White House of the Confederacy. Most of these are early 19th century and are of a typical design of the period. Most, if not all, of these structures are functioning buildings today and are often used as offices of the nearby university. Some, however, have been converted to museums, and if you have the time, I encourage you to check out some of the smaller and lesser known museums throughout the area.
The John Marshall House is the historic home of the famous Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, who is most notable for his influential decision in the cases of Marbury v. Madison and McCulloch v. Maryland in the early 19th century. The house, built in 1790, was the home to Marshall, his wife, and their six children. He lived here until his death in 1835. Unfortunately, the house was closed during our visit, but it is definitely worth a look. Now the next thing you want to check out when you're here in Richmond is Capitol Square. Now all around me it's a, it's a big area right in the center of town and you have a famous monument here to George Washington of Virginia and it's just basically in the center of the town and it's surrounded by governmental buildings and some beautiful architecture and in the center is the Virginia State Capitol, one of the oldest and most architecturally significant capitals in the United States. So let's take a look now. Capitol Square is a park surrounding the Virginia State Capitol. The park features a variety of historic and progressive sculptures among meandering paths and impressive old trees. The square features some very old and traditional monuments mixed among more recent additions. Richmond being the former capital of the Confederacy often maintains a negative image in many people's minds due to the controversial nature of the events and purposes of the United States Civil War. The square, however, seems to capture the traditional while also blending human rights and progressive ideologies at the same time. Next, we are visiting the Virginia State Capitol. Richmond was not the original capital of Virginia. That goes to Williamsburg, which is not too far southeast. The capital of Virginia moved to Richmond in 1780 due to a growing population and better economic and transportation opportunities in Richmond versus Williamsburg. The impressive capitol building was built between 1785 and 1788 and was designed by famous architect and third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, who is also one of the most famous Virginians. The Virginia State Capitol is open to the public and you can choose to take a guided tour or take your own self-guided tour. This is the Old Chamber and is arguably the most important room impacting the history and politics of Virginia and is the largest room in Thomas Jefferson's original Capitol building. In this very room, Aaron Burr was acquitted of treason in 1807, and the Virginia Constitutional Convention of 1830 was held here. It was also a meeting place for the Provisional Confederate Congress. The room also features a bust of Robert E. Lee and marks the location where he took command of the armed forces of Virginia on April 23, 1861. Interestingly, the room evokes a sense of an almost European-like court versus a traditional American political office, largely due to its historical nature. Also see the impressive statue of George Washington, the most famous Virginian that ever lived, in the center of the rotunda.
This is the Virginia Executive Mansion. This impressive mansion built in 1813 is the oldest occupied governor's mansion in the U.S. The mansion sits on 14 manicured acres and is located adjacent to the Capitol and is right on Capitol Square. The building behind me is Richmond's old city hall. Now, it was built in 1894 and it's no longer used as city hall and it is now the home for private offices. But you still can visit the first floor and the first floor I hear is as magnificent as the outside is. Unfortunately, we are here on the weekend and it's not open to the public on the weekend. But when you're here in Richmond, I definitely recommend checking it out if you're here during the week. Another interesting sight to see right off Capitol Square is St. Paul's Episcopal Church. This Greek Revival Church, built in 1845, was the house of worship of Confederate General Robert E. Lee and Confederate President Jefferson Davis. This earned it the nickname of the Cathedral of the Confederacy, which has led to heavy protesting and vandalism on the site in recent years. Right across the street from St. Paul's is St. Peter's Pro-Catholic Church. Built in 1834, this is the oldest Catholic church in Richmond and one of the oldest Catholic churches in Virginia. It was originally the center of worship for a growing Irish immigrant community, and after the Civil War became the home of the city's first African-American Catholic congregation. This is the Stuart Lee House. General Robert E. Lee's wife and daughter lived here after his property was confiscated in Arlington, Virginia during the Civil War. Lee retired to the home for a couple months following the Confederate surrender at Apotomax in 1865, but left soon after due to constant harassment. One thing you can't miss when you're here in Richmond is the famous canal walk, and that's where I am now. So basically what it is, is it's a park along the James River, so you can get excellent views of the James River, of the falls of the James River, and then there's some amazing like foliage, and there's like monuments everywhere. So it's definitely somewhere where you can kind of get out of the city and take a walk and just kind of peruse and, and see the city from afar right here on the river. The Canal Walk is a beautiful urban park located just south of downtown Richmond along the James River. Here there are beautiful sculptures and the monuments dedicated to the history of the area. This impressive monument sends a powerful message about the importance of freedom for all men. The Canal Walk's monuments serve to remember the past and drive forward into the future with a progressive mindset. Along the Canal Walk you will find beautiful foliage, open fields, several sculptures created by local artists, meandering paths, and beautiful and inspiring bridges that cross the falls of the James River. Here you can look out onto the city and ponder how far Richmond has come from its colonial and Civil War era histories.
The wide expanse of the fall of the James River is truly inspiring and creates a sense of awe as you look out onto the wide expanse. It is a truly meditative and thought-provoking experience. The next thing you have to see when you're here in Richmond is the American Civil War Museum, which is one of the best Civil War museums in the country, and also historic Tredegar. So Tredegar is basically an old foundry that was responsible for manufacturing a lot of the cannon that was used for the Confederate Army in the Civil War. So there's a lot of interesting history to learn here at this site. And when you get your ticket, it includes both sites. So let's head in now. The American Civil War Museum in Richmond walks you through the Civil War from beginning to end. It dives into the reasons for the start of the Civil War and helps you to understand the tumultuous political climate of 1860s America. This Civil War Museum, interestingly, dissects the situation from a different perspective than what you might see in a Civil War Museum in the North. Interestingly, instead of focusing on the faults of the South and why the Confederacy must be tamed, this museum seems to evoke a sense of how damaging the war was and how it cost both sides incredible amounts of money and a horrible loss of life. The exhibits are very well done and there are tons of real Civil War era artifacts that you can see up close and personal, helping you to better understand this important piece of American history. Historic Tredegar, located adjacent to the museum, is the half-ruined site of the Tredegar Ironworks. This foundry was responsible for manufacturing the vast majority of cannon and artillery for the Confederate Army during the Civil War. The manufacturing and industry located in this area is often lauded as the reason why Richmond served as such a strategic location to becoming the capital of the Confederate States of America. Now one thing that you absolutely cannot miss when you're here in Richmond is the canal walk murals. So you can see them around me. So what they are is a series of murals and they go really high up. I mean this has got to be 20 feet up on this old abandoned factory and it's local artists and it's just really cool to see. So you kind of go along the canal walk and then boom it's just there. So definitely check that out when you're here. The canal walk murals are something that you have to see while you're in Richmond. These towering murals created by local artists evoke a sense of wonder, awe, history, and politics as you walk underneath them. They have become a popular social media picture-taking site in the past several years, but I encourage you to instead take a look at each one and really dissect what the artist was trying to say with his or her impressive devotion to the city of Richmond using their creative gifts.
if you want to get your drink on, I recommend you come here to Shaco Slip. So this is a small neighborhood just south of the main downtown area of Richmond, right? And there, it is filled with bars and restaurants. And I'm here around St. Patrick's Day, so you see everyone's decked out in green. So definitely check this out, especially if you want to have a little bit of nightlife and, you know, drink a little bit, dance, have some fun. Shaco Slip is a historic neighborhood located just south of downtown Richmond. This area has been known to attract a young urban professional vibe and is filled with bars, restaurants, quaint stores, and specialty shops. The neighborhood is characterized by mostly early 19th century row houses and apartment buildings and much of the area maintains the traditional cobblestone narrow streets. The neighborhood has, for most of its history, had a gritty industrialized feel but in the past several decades has experienced a resurgence of investment, population, and urban renewal as younger generations are returning to the city and are interested in living in historic areas. Richmond's Main Street Station. Now this is an active Amtrak station. Trains come in here several times a day, but it's a historic building and has a lot of interesting beauty and it blends the old with the new architecture. So let's head in. Richmond's Main Street Station is a historic train station located right in downtown Richmond. Though the station is not as heavily used as it once was, it still is the departure and arrival point of many regional Amtrak trains. The impressive architecture blends the old and grand with the sleek and new in the impressive lower concourse. This is also the location of the Richmond, Virginia Welcome Center where you can learn all about things to do and see in the area. The main concourse lauds beautiful high ceilings in a cathedral-like setting. This area is also used as a site for events and conventions. For example, on the day of our filming, the main concourse hosted an, an Indian cultural event. Main Street Station is an example of a truly grand American train station. Okay guys, that was Richmond. So we didn't do the whole city, it's a large city, so we did mainly the downtown and the central area, right? We're gonna do the other areas of Richmond in later videos, but what I love so much about central Richmond is the history, the art, the culture, and the grittiness that really makes it so interesting. Listen guys, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe, share this video, like this video. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there's anything I missed or anything that you wanna see in future Richmond videos. And until next time guys, take care.